Okay, Mr. Sarana of, uh, of HPCL also joining us now. Mr. Sarana, always great to speak with you. This time, of course, we've seen a huge forex hit on the quarterly numbers uh, and uh, some GRM pain as well. Talk to us about, you know, first and foremost, the exceptional items that have been impacting uh, you this quarter and how much of that is on account of COVID? The, this quarter as such had been exceptional because of multiple reasons. Uh, one thing was COVID pandemic. Other thing was the uh, rise of war in the, the crude producing countries. Abnormal rush for increasing or decreasing the, uh, the crude production, etc. So there was a lot of volatility in the crude oil prices and the product oil prices, which led to a sharp fall in the crude prices, uh, almost to $13 per barrel at some point of time and uh, then there was a quick recovery it led to abnormal inventory losses during the quarter now what you see these one uh, 1000 crore of exceptional item basically this is the inventory this can happen because of two two reasons one thing is the inventory which you hold as of 31st march in your books of account and that is to be valued at cost or the realizable value, whichever is lower for the accounting terms. So on this component, on a conservative basis, you will always be required to book losses if your realizable value is less than your procurement cost. But you won't be able to gain, uh, book the gains if the realizable value is higher than the cost because it is the lower of it. So that's one element. Now, in this case, because of the sharp drop in the crude prices, at the March end, the inventories which you hold at the end of the month, that is to be evaluated at a lower price than at the cost. And so there is an exceptional item of 1,000 crore. Now that is only a representation in the overall profitability or overall inventory losses. This is included, but just for the representation because this is not year on year item. That's why it is represented. The second element is there is a timing difference between from the time you purchase the crude to the time it gets processed and then the time to sell it in the market. And the total from crude to product, there is a margin, but it is a two element. One, because of the operation margin, because of processing. And second is because of the timing difference from the time you purchase the crude to uh, sold the product. So the differential uh, in crude prices from the time you purchase to the time you to the time you sold, that is considered as an inventory gain. So overall, there was an inventory loss of 4,253 crore in the last year. Even in the last quarter, before itself, there was an inventory loss of 4,113 crore. Now compare this with the previous year, uh, whole year inventory gain of 166 crore. It means just the inventory of Laws accounted for 5,500 crore, mostly during the last quarter itself. And that is one element, that is what is exceptional. All right. Now, core GRMs as well dropped into negative territory this quarter. So what's the outlook on that front going ahead? Just to correct it, uh, the negative margin is a reported margin. The core margin was nine dollar because the inventory loss itself was ten ten point six dollar. So just to correct that, uh, yes, the uh, there are two elements. One thing is that the cracks prospects had been abnormally low because the total demand collapse in the world over because of the nationwide lockdown on account of COVID nineteen pandemic. So at some point of time, diesel and petrol price had gone even into negative territory, which we had not seen uh, earlier any point of time. Now, after that, the price are improving. And uh, as of uh, now, if you see the diesel price has already come to five to six dollars. The demand of gasoline is improving in US, the demand of diesel is improving in European countries, in India also. There had been a very sharp recovery in the demand. The demand of petrol and diesel, which has gone to almost 40% uh, of the normal, it has already reached to around 85% of the normal. And we expect it to be 85 to 90% by the end of this month. 
So uh, I will detail about the demand pattern later on. But coming back to sure. GRMs, with the improving uh, tracks and with the benign crude prices, uh, I think the GRM should improve. If you see the Singapore GRM forecast, that is also which was negative, and the negative GRM in Singapore uh, benchmark with GRMs, it was uh, not seen for almost uh, long time. I think it is the ten years right. lowest GRMs it has hit. But now the forecasts are positive, and uh, I think that the same thing should reflect in the actual GRMs also. Just to for the information, the Singapore GRMs are daily crude and daily products, while the actual GRMs are based on the actual crude timing procurement, the procurement timing of the crude and the actual uh, product dispatches. So, to that extent, uh, there will be some uh, something, but uh, uh, those right. gets are quoted as inventory and so on. Right. Mr. Serrano, your marketing margins as well in the quarter gone by have remained weak. Uh, what kind of trends do you foresee from here onwards? Well, the prices were static for most of the period during the lockdown. Because at one end, there was uh, a com uh, complete uh, collapse of the demand because of the lockdown condition, restriction of movements. Etc. Except LPE, which was moving, the MS and HSD demand come down almost 30 to 40 percent of the normal. Now, during this period, parallelly, there were also a lot of things happening on the crude pricing front because of the international scenario, the discussion of the OPEX plus countries, a price war between major producing oil producing countries, the initial disagreement on the anticipated cuts, subsequent agreement to increase uh, the cuts substantially, then uh, sudden drops in OFs, OSP by some of the producing countries. So there were uh, a lot of events which were happening parallelly, leading to substantial spri uh, spikes uh, in the crude prices up and down both sides. Right. Also wanted to understand, now with the, the reopening happening partially, what kind of capacities are you working with? Yeah, as you are aware that HPCL sells more than what the process is around refineries. So HPCL sells around 40 million tonne of products every year. And within our own refineries, along with our joint venture refineries, we process around 29 million tonne or so. So to that extent, HPCL was a little bit uh, in advantage position as far as uh, refineries kept. So during the the, uh, the lockdown also, HP operated its refineries to uh, Vizek refinery, we operated almost at 100% capacity and the uh, Mumbai refinery almost 85% capacity. And as of now, we are operating both the refineries at 100% of the capacity. Uh, actually, is a part of our strategy because we uh, we need more products than what we process in our refineries. It makes sense for us to to process and keep the products rather than just. Okay, what's the outlook on volumes from here on, Mr. Surana? So, as the relaxations have come in uh, gradually in steps, starting from 20th of April onwards. The, uh, the product uptake has moved. During the complete lockdown time, uh, it has come down as low as 30% on MS and HSD, which moved to 60% in, uh, in May. And now we have got 82 to 85% of the normal demand. So the petrol and diesel demand as of now is in that range, 82 to 85% of the demand which we had in the last year, the same month. We, as the more and more opening ups are happening in various states, then we expect it to touch around 85 to 90 percent by this month end or maybe at the most by mid-July. Subsequent to that, uh, it will depend on how the construction sector picks up, how the industries picks up. And after that, it may be slightly 
Okay. There's also been a sharp hike uh, that we've seen, of course, in petrol and diesel prices over the last 10 days. Um, you know, do you, does, did a bulk of that move happen or are more hikes not ruled out? Can we actually see more as well going forward from here? It is day-to-day -day basis and uh, we need to see how the international prices are moving. So we can't say that the bulk is over and not over and get the line. And uh, you, as you are aware, there is a substantial part of taxation from the central and state governments. Uh, in the last period, there was a hike in excise duty, then there was a hike in debt by the states also. The government has also got the compulsion for the resources and during such, such time, they also need the resources. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, we are concerned, we are trying to align it to international prices. And if the prices move up, it will move up, it will move down, it will move back. Right. What you are seeing is because the crude prices moved up from uh, almost ten dollars in April, ten dollars in May, so that uh, that impact had to come. Only one question, uh, one more thing I can answer probably because uh, the people may have a confusion regarding the uh, the borrowings uh, because some people were asking me. So. Sure. In the March end, borrowing has got a component of short term and long term. Normally, in March end, we have the taxation. So then. All right, we'll leave it there for now, Mr. Sarana. Thanks so much for joining us.